Lives Are We Supposed to Start, the podcast. Ready? One, two, three. It is going to be an epic episode. Thanks to Judge Judy Diana. You are smiling. I'm so proud of myself. It's embarrassing. She is smiling from ear to ear, <laughs> looking at me like, have you ever been prouder? I mean, have I ever been more spectacular than at this moment? Later on, our listener will find out why that clap was so important. And that is yet to be revealed when we reveal the identity of our guest. Our very special guest. Pumps, before we reveal who our guest is and what a big fucking deal he is. He is. Tell us what you've had it with. I have fucking had it. When you go into a toilet, like a restroom, and you sit down on the toilet, and it is one inch above the ground, like low toilet seats. The low rider toilet. The low rider toilet. I had two experiences with it just yesterday, and I thought, who the fuck designed this? Why is it so low to the ground? I felt like it was eating my knees. Uh It makes no sense, male or female. It's too hard. Makes it harder than it has to be. And I've had it with shit that's harder than it has to be. You know what's interesting about this is I know that you do not hover over a toilet. You are a no, barebacker. I'm a barebacker. So in this instance, you are barebacking on a low rider. I'm a low ride barebacker. That's yes. right. That's right. Low rider. Yep. Look at pumps. I mean, I'm pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just feeling myself today. You are. You're so cute. You're just smiling so big. I mean, I just can't get over how fabulous that clap was. YouTube, if you can see this megawatt smile, it's just adorable. She is the most precious little angel. Just a precious. Okay. Let me tell you something. I don't know if this is a had it. I don't know if this is a hit it, but it's something we have to talk about. Okay. Toasters. Okay. The numbers. On them. Oh, right. One, two, three, four. Do you think that's for toastiness? Yes. Or do you think it's minutes? No, I think it's for toastiness. Like I want it extra crispy. Uh, Is that wrong? It's minutes. Oh, good tip. I think universally, everybody, for all of these years of having toasters and having toasted bread, we have all collectively thought that the numbers represented toastiness. Right, I did. When in fact, they are minutes. And I learned this on, I think, TikTok. I mean, you learn something new every day from TikTok. Mm -hmm. Just get a little bit smarter. And listener, today is going to be an episode about learning. Yep. So I'm going to share some things that I found out today that I'm going to share with the listener and with Pumps. Okay. Numbers on a toaster or for what, Pumps? Minutes. Not toastiness. Not toastiness. Let me ask you this. Do you think that you can burp in space? I'm going to say because you would assume the answer is yes, no. No, you cannot burp in space. Right, because you would assume you could because if you could do it here, but it has to be wrong. Okay. True or false, the human stomach can dissolve a razor blade. False. True. True. Really? Yeah. It can dissolve a razor blade. Boy, talk about acid, man. True or false? Hot water freezes faster than cold. I'm going to say, I think it's false, so I'm going to say true. Nailed it. It's true. Going against your first instinct. Going against my first instinct (laughs) on like super random stuff, yeah. True or false? Your urine has enough minerals in it that could charge your phone that's so random i'm gonna say yes i mean (laughs) look at miss mensa did you know that urine is sterile little miss mensa yeah i think i think i did yeah i mean i just know everything about urine and here's just a little a little bit of information i thought was interesting you know how when it rains on earth Mm -hmm. it rains water correct Saturn, the planet, receives 2.2 million pounds of rain in diamonds. Real diamonds? Real diamonds. 
shit, I'm surprised somebody hadn't gone up there and started mining them. They can't even make it to Mars yet. No, I know, but I'm just saying like that's, people will want that because they can sell the diamonds for money. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Right, right. Our guests later on, I think, can weigh in on some of this stuff with us. Absolutely. Listener, we're kind of teasing you. You're probably like, why are the girls getting so academic? Right. We're doing some brain exercises right now, Pumps and me, to get ready for our next guest because we have to feign being super intelligent. Right, Pumps? Right. And I'm nervous about it. No, we're going to crush it. Okay. Welcome to I've Had It. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. Here's the deal. I'm not going to fuck around to calling her the star. We're not going to do any of that shit today because, guys, we're about to shit our pants. We, before I even reveal it, and I know this is torture and y'all have had it with me. I'm not going to reveal it because I'm going to kick it to Kylie. Kylie, what's going on on the World Wide Web with I've Had It Podcast International? I don't know if it's as high IQ as what we're going for, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not shocking. I've got a one-star review. Okay. And it's titled Painful. <laughs> okay. Rosie Palm writes, this was so painful to listen to. My ears actually began bleeding. <laughs> this show is perfect for the dumb. <laughs> These women are their leaders. <laughs> <laughs> We're the leaders of, of the, the dumb. dumb. I kind of like it. Shit. You know what? I like it. But I don't want our next guest. I hope he hasn't seen that. Right. Surely. I mean, he would have canceled if he would have seen it. <laughs> he said, I don't want to be on the leaders of the, the dumb. The leaders of the dumb. Yeah. Wow. One star. Okay. Wh- what? Who's next? Okay. I've got one that's the opposite. Okay. Five stars and it's titled Crushing It Twice Over. Okay. They write, these two are hotter than a twice baked potato. <laughs> you are the moment. I wish I could put your glittering, rainbow, diamond-encrusted, toxed and tranquilized patooties in my pocket. <laughs> we want our guest to for sure not hear that. No, I want him to hear oh, that. you want him to hear that? Yeah, for sure. That but- we're so darling. He wants to shrink us and put us in his pocket. <laughs> I get oh, that. Okay. I thought they were referring to the Botox. You know me. Everything goes back to the Botox. Oh, my God. How See, did you miss that? I just missed it. That was a full-blown compliment. Thank you. The full-blown compliment. Sorry, I missed it. Well, are you nervous? I have to say I'm a little bit nervous. Have you been doing your homework? I've been doing my homework and I have questions about my homework. So that makes me think he's going to think I'm dumb. Pumps, you cannot fuck this up for us. I know. I'm really nervous. You know, you have an ability. To fuck everything up. You know, sometimes it just happens. And here's the deal, sis. You can't fuck this up for us. Not today. No. You're going to deliver. You're going to crush it. Crush nation. (laughs) Okay. So this guest is a world-renowned underachiever. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't done a thing with his life. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Makes you and I look like we are Mensa. <laughs> Absolutely. He doesn't know shit from Shinola, <laughs> as we say here in Oklahoma. Right. Just kidding, audience. He's really smart. He is your personal astrophysicist, best-selling author, host of acclaimed podcast Star Talk and Emmy award winning National Geographic channel shows Star Talk and Cosmos and director of the Hayden Planetarium at the Museum of Natural History in New York City let's welcome to I've had it Neil deGrasse Tyson Pumps I absolutely love my Bombus socks Bombas socks are so comfortable. They make your feet feel like it's on pillows. They're cozy and warm. I wear them every night when I sleep. You know what's so great about Bombas? They actually donate one item for every item purchased. It's because of Bombas that I now know that the three most requested clothing items in a homeless shelter are socks, tees, and underwear. The folks at Bombas donate one item for 
every item purchased. Also, Bombas has 100% happiness guarantee. So if you get the wrong size, your dog chews up your socks or a pair vanishes in the washing machine, it's easy to get a free return exchange or replacement. Listener, are you ready to get comfy and give back? Head over to bombas.com slash had it and use code had it for 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash had it and use code had it at checkout. Pumps, you know how you told me you want to eat less takeout this new year? Yes. I can help make your dreams come true when I introduce you to Factor. You can forget the frantic lunch preps and the rushed dinners. Factor's two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up with restaurant-quality meals all delivered right to your front door. They have over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. You can skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Get chef-crafted restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door. They're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means there's more time for you, pumps. Listener, head to factormeals.com slash hadit50 and use the code hadit50 to get 50% off. That's code hadit50 at factor. Okay, you ready, Neil? Oh, wait, wait, let me... And now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson, will you please share with my friend Pumps and me what it's like being so damn smart? Yeah. No, I, so I think people misunderstand what smart is. All right. So uh, let's back up for a minute. The, The winner of any episode of Jeopardy, we think of them as smart. All right. And that's a kind of smartness. That's a, They know stuff and they know it quickly. All right. But how about people that might not know that much, but can figure stuff out? Right. I put in a lot of effort for you to be there right next to me as we're thinking about the topic. So in other words, I could be professor at the front of the room in front of the chalkboard, whatever they're made of today, the board and just talking. And you have to come 90% of the way to meet me then I'm just lecturing. Or I can face you, learn how you think and what receptors you have for receiving and be, and, and, and and absorbing information. And I go 90% of the way to you and I share that knowledge with you. That's a different relationship, right? right? One of them is, it's your responsibility to learn. And if you're not, it's your problem. The other one is my responsibility that you learn it. And my goal here is when I'm done, You take ownership of what it is I shared with you so that you don't have to say, this is true because Tyson said so. If that's what you end up saying, I failed in that. I want you to say, this is true because here's why. Right. And I understand why. Okay. So if you want to say that I'm smart, then tell me it's because I care how you think. And I put in the time and effort to reach that. Otherwise, I'm just talking to the breeze. Well, you know, you, I live, we live in Oklahoma City, and it is the buckle of the Bible Belt. And I was not raised with religion, which is very rare for... How did that happen? (laughs) My mother is a very curious person and decided around the age of seven or eight that she thought all of religion was kind of BS. And she's a voracious reader. In Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. She's from Dallas originally. So when you are a person like me and you're surrounded, all your peers are going to church and you weren't really ever indoctrinated in it, you find yourself in early adulthood on YouTube watching videos of people like you. And it makes sense. And it's um, um, it's stimulating. It really was like, oh, my gosh. this You can blame really me under- for you losing your religion? <laughs> <laughs> is this... Is this- all right, go on. I'm listening. Go yes, on. yes. My, but you know, I never had religion ever, and so okay. 
I'd find myself watching videos of you, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens, and it just was so fantastic to be stuck in Oklahoma and have such a great orator explain what was going on in the universe. But I digress here a little bit because you traffic in helping people understand things. And we kind of traffic here a little bit in pettiness, Neil. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We need some of that too. Okay. Okay. Let's let's face it. Okay. We traffic in, you know, the irritations and the pettiness that happen in your everyday experience with other members of our species. And now we all congregate on social media. And something that has been rather irritating to me that, and also to pumps here, are the people who think that their life is falling apart during Mercury in retrograde. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we back up for a moment? Absolutely. All right. Let's, let's go back 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, a mo- just a moment. All right. Uh, back when Earth was deeply believed by all to be the center of all motion. All right, so now in the sky, by the way, there were seven known planets back 2,000 years ago. There was Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and the moon. Back then, a planet comes from the Greek planetes, meaning wanderer. So those were the seven objects that moved against the background stars. We owe the names of the days of the week to those seven objects, okay? So Sunday is named after what object? The sun. The sun, thank you. Uh, Monday. Um, Monday. Mercury? Mars? Monday. Moon. Moon. The moon, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Remember, uh, we have small petty brains over here. Okay, good. <laughs> Saturday. Uh, Saturn. Saturn. Saturn, yes. And... We have a mixture of sort of Norse gods and 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 uh, uh, Roman gods in there as well, but they each correspond in their own traditions to these seven objects. So, now watch. As they're moving against the background stars, let's take Mercury. Mercury is moving night to night. You don't see it while, just, while you're just standing there. You have to watch it against the pattern of stars behind it. Okay. You see it move. Then it begins to slow down. Then it stops, then it reverses, and then it stops again and then goes back the way it was headed. If you're the center of all motion, that is weird. Right. You gotta come up with a word for that. That's Mercury in retrograde. That can't be good, because it's not (laughs) always doing that. Okay, so now, fast forward, we're now Galileo, Copernicus, now Earth, is no longer the center of motion. It's the sun. And we go around the sun. So does Mercury. So now Mercury is just going around the sun, minding its own business. And as it goes around the sun, on the front side, you see it going from left to right. And then it goes in the back side of the sun. It goes from right to left. Okay? That's what happens when you go in a circle around things. If we were at a NASCAR race and you're watching the cars First pass in front of you and then go to the other side of the track. Are you inventing a word to describe the car going on the other side of the track? No. The car is always moving forward. Right. So you're, you're not- telling us this is an optical illusion. I, I'm <laughs> right. So, so the car, you're not going to say, oh, the NASCAR, it's now in retrograde. No, the car is <laughs> going on the other side of the sun. Okay. <laughs> So the concept of retrograde dates to when our ego was so large that we believe the universe cared about us. Right. And the planets knew you existed and it's going to have an influence on you. Think of the ego that that required to think, to, to have those thoughts. Oh my gosh. So it goes through retrograde pretty often for every earth orbit. Um, Mercury is in retrograde frequently enough in a year something's bound to happen that you don't like happening in your life right Right. so either you take responsibility for it or you don't (laughs) and if you don't you have the entire universe to blame it on go right ahead I'm not going to stop you but just (laughs) don't think you are engaged 
in any exercise in objective truth. <laughs> I love it because I see a lot of people on social media losing their minds and it's like Mercury's in retrograde and I forgot to do this and this and this. And it seems to diminish the role of personal responsibility. So I started researching it and I found a video of yours. Look at Lee, you cure yourself. I know. <laughs> oh my curious. gosh. I know. So I found videos of yours online and I was like, there's just no evidence for this. And then I thought what's so interesting about this and with astrology, it is a very young earth centric idea before people like you were able to get a telescope and zoom into the universe to figure out that we are actually not the center of it. And our planet certainly is not the center of it. And not only that, the constellations, which people want to believe are these real things, are just stars scattered in space. Right. <laughs> some are far, some are near, some are this. And if you take another point of view on it, it'll take some other shape. And it's not going to be your crab or your your scales or your fishes. And so, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. Actually, <laughs> If aliens came to visit and I told them, if they, they would have said, people do what? <laughs> they think what? <laughs> they, they lean in. What? And 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 you're the smartest species in the in the in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the alien will just call back home and say, uh, uh, "There is no sign of intelligent life on Earth." <laughs> so, as somebody who knows this, and you see this stuff, you have to see it. People who live their life based on, you know, what where the stars were on this old dated science. Could Neil deGrasse Tyson say, "I've had it with that"? Well. So, sure, however, however, and I know that's your whole theme and mantra. So <laughs> you got to be wanna, a little petty for us now. I, I don't you got to dig uh, deep. If you're this yeah, big of a person with this I, big of a I, brain, it's too I, much for the universe. I don't want to <laughs> overstep the, the I've had it mantra here. But let me just say <laughs> that in a free country, you can think whatever you want. That's right. And you're distracted by the by the 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 Mercury retrograde people. There's the whole there's the flat Earth people, okay? <laughs> and, and the people say we never went to the moon. I, you know, I there's a lot of na navigating I have to get through before I even get to the Mercury people, okay? <laughs> Just all right. So we live in a free country. There was a, a a famous basketball player, Kyrie Irving, played for the Boston Celtics, they got traded a couple of times and I lost track. He was a big flat earther, all on his social media. And part of me said, why does anyone care that a professional basketball player says earth is flat? <laughs> Plenty of jobs for you in this world if you think earth is flat. Basketball is one of them because your court <laughs> is very flat, okay? So it's, you're good with that, I, okay? I'm not, I, I can't chase after you for that. We're in a free country. Just don't try to become head of NASA. That would be bad. Okay? This would be a category of job you should not try to get. All right? Otherwise, so so as an educator and as a free speech defender, I can't say I've had it with them. I, I can't say that. Because if, if the, day, the moment I say I've had it, it's like I'm ready to just, just bitch slap somebody. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and and you know i've had it with you that's like the last thing you say before you take up arms right, right? isn't it <laughs> i'm way more chill than i think you needed for this program right well now. i do think i do think it would be an interesting case study to drop you in like um a suburban oklahoma city area in the suburbs and that you had to attend a mega church every Wednesday, every Sunday, tithe and do all this stuff. I think, I think that we could force, and I've had it situation with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Granted, you might be a hostage, but I think <laughs> that we could elicit the response required to really have had it. I think, I don't think it'd take very long. I, I, I got one for you. I okay. got one for you. Okay. okay. When I was, just before I turned 12, no, I was 11. No, no, no. I was 10 not yet 11, visiting a friend of mine's grandparents' hometown in a tiny town in Virginia called Pamplin, Virginia. Apparently, it's still a tiny town, all right? I, it might have had 500 people in it. He had relatives there, so we went to visit. This is July 1969. That's how old I am. Okay. 
And I was already a geeky kid. All right. From, from age nine, I knew I wanted to be an astrophysicist. All right. And by the way, what else was happening in July, 1969? Oh, the moon. Yes. We're landing on the moon. Yes. yes. Okay. We're landing on the moon. So I'm there and I'm watching things unfold around me and I cannot, I'm 10 years old and I'm saying, I cannot believe what I'm watching here. Okay. The, the, it was like, okay, there were old folks there and someone had a, a scrape on there. They got uh, scratched with a, a rose bush and they said, oh, let's put some kerosene on that. It was like, what? <laughs> like, what? Okay. <laughs> and there were these folk remedies that they would invoking. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Okay. And then it happened to be revival week. I don't know anything about revival. But I go to revival. <laughs> You go into church, it is hot. This is July in Virginia. It is hot. There's no air conditioning. Everybody's got the fan. And it just went on interminably. We were in the church for like, I, I don't know how long we were actually in the church, but I know how long it felt. It felt like it was like four or five hours. And it was every day. And I said, what is going on? There he is. I'm seeing this. There's our guy. I, I could not. And I said, and I told him, I've had it. <laughs> I I We're landing on the moon, for goodness sake. And people putting kerosene on this. And it was, that wasn't it. There was like more. I would later buy a book about 19th century remedies. And they were all in there. Right. Kerosene on a cut. Yeah, that'll fix it right up. Okay. <laughs> and that'll disinfect it. All right. That was something for me. Yeah. The kerosene was the straw. <laughs> yeah. That was the straw. It was the moon landing during the revival. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know what I like about you, Neil, is every answer I ask you about Mercury and retrograde. Let me go back 2,000 years. Neil, what have you had it with? <laughs> Let me go back to when oh, I was 10 best. years old. Everything oh. is very... <laughs> okay. Well, so one other thing, just about the, just to put the religion thing to bed. Okay. So uh, people started asking me religion questions. This is maybe 30 years ago, 25 years ago. And I, you know, I'd have underinformed responses, you know, um, you do your thing. I'll do it. No, I should be more informed than that. So I started reading religious books and religious texts and religious tracts and religious writings, uh, interpretations of writings. I read what the apologetics wrote. And so I have shelf upon shelf of religious books. And so I have a certain fluency in multiple religions, primarily Christianity, but other religions as well, that I now feel comfortable having a full up conversation with a religious person. And without offending them, I don't, I'm not out to offend really, but I'm not going to let go of objective truths. But let me ask you this. Do you believe in God? I find no evidence for any God that anyone says exists based on what they say are the properties of that God. Same. <laughs> in a conversation with a religious person, in every case, it is basically a certain fact, a certainty that I have read more about their religion than they have read about my science. Right. Okay? So that makes for a very mismatched conversation because... I was I was in Vegas. My, my I had a driver who who recognized me, okay, and he asked me a question. He says, "What counts as evidence for you and for proof?" And I said, "Well, we what counts as proof?" And I said, "We need evidence, testing, this sort of thing." And he says, "Does eyewitness testimony matter?" And I say, "It can be the start of evidence, but it's not the best evidence." And then he said, "Well, how about the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus?" Okay. <laughs> that's what he said he's also a part-time preacher and he's and he, but he's also a driver you know he's a, like a car service driver that's when he said i'm also a preacher i said okay that's fine so i said what evidence are you citing and he said oh well the guards who were near the tomb okay and i said um uh, they weren't eyewitnesses to this and rather than embarrass him in that moment i just kept talking rather than to get, I just said, they were not eyewitnesses. We said, well, why? And I said, they were asleep when this happened. It says that clearly in the scriptures, okay? So they guard the, the tomb, they fell asleep, 
God came in, moved the stone, took out the body of Jesus, and he ascended into heaven. That's the narrative around that. They were not eyewitnesses, period. I'm an astrophysicist telling this to a preacher. <laughs> that shouldn't happen that way. I know. No. I know. And what I think is interesting, because like you, I probably didn't read as much as you did, because I'm slightly less ambitious, just slightly, though, Neil. I don't want you to think lowly of me. But I began to voraciously read about this religion that encircled me in my life here in Oklahoma City. And I was really surprised. Fundamentalist Christians. That's yes. right. Uh -huh. I was really surprised to find out that the life of Jesus did not make it into the historical record, that somebody's doing magic tricks and, you know— turning water into wine and, you know, walking on water and all of these things. And the first account of him was 75 to 100 years after his death. I started researching it and I found such little evidence. And what I found was that Christianity was just basically a knockoff of an Egyptian religion prior to that. So when I have conversations with fundamentalists around Oklahoma, they don't know any of these things. And so then, of course, they go hit the Google to try to, you know, and I don't have these conversations very often. It's not something that is that I, I don't have any desire to change anybody's thoughts about the world. Well, you are a little bit. You're trying to dismantle the very foundation of their belief system by, <laughs> citing, by citing these the, these cases. And what I'm saying is it's a belief system no matter what, even if Jesus were most certainly real, that doesn't change any of this. Whether he existed or didn't exist, it doesn't matter. There's an entire religion based on his existence. And so that's not going to go away because you made an argument about it. So I so that's what I'm saying. I'm 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 more chill than either of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not hard to believe. Pumps, we are going to take control of our health this year especially yours. And there's one thing you've been doing that I think you've got to continue to do. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. My Just Thrive probiotics. I love the changes in my body since I've started taking Just Thrive. No bloat, constipation, diarrhea issues, gone. I mean, it's been a game changer for me. You know, I love Just Thrive's psychobiotic. It's called Just Calm. It totally helps me deal with life's everyday annoyances, stress factors. I'm sleeping better. The products at Just Thrive have been game changers for us in the year 2023. And we are going to continue down this path of health and being beacons of low stress and fantastic bowel movements with our friends at Just Thrive. Listener, if you're ready to take control of constipation, bloat, and stress and live your healthiest life yet, you can get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive probiotic today. Visit justthrivehealth.com and use promo code HADIT. Just Thrive Health Dot com and be sure to use the promo code had it take control today with just thrive pumps when we first started this podcast having an online store with merch in it was the furthest thing from my mind it was absolutely overwhelming to think about how can we get the merch? How can we sell the merch? How can we deliver the merch? We could not have done it without Shopify. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow tend to grow with Shopify. What I love about Shopify Pumps is it's here for us no matter how big or or how small we are. Listener, sign up for Shopify's $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash had it, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash had it now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash had it. Well, Neil, we like to play a game, and this is where I think we're going to have you completely locked exactly where we want you all right this is where we are really going to close in on even if, though i'm chill and even you're, you're so chill we have a we have a book here called the permanent record and we're going to put in the permanent record neil degrasse tyson is chill okay but 
you, you, that will be submitted, but I am going to force you to play a game called Had It or Hit It. And I'm going to list some things and you have to answer. If you don't like them, you will have had it. And if you like them, you'll hit it. Okay. okay. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Had it or hit it, double dippers. And I'm not talking about anything in space. I'm talking about eating chips and salsa. Oh, he, 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 he. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone means to double dip. I think they double dip by accident. So, so nice. Yeah, I'm it's get a you. yeah. They, they just forgot that it was a thing, and so um, here here can, can I? I know you want quick answers here, but no, you're fine. Let me, okay. Um. If you see someone double dipping, okay, that's not sanitary, we know. But suppose you were single, let's say. Can you imagine tongue kissing that person? (laughs) If you can, then it doesn't matter that they double dipped. Right, because you're going to kiss them anyway. On a first date, you're kissing, you're exchanging saliva on a first date. Well, I'm so, not a germaphobe, so it doesn't bother me. Like, I if I I'm not a germaphobe either. Yeah, if it falls on the ground, I pick it up, I eat it. Yeah, I don't too. even care. Yeah. So I would say hit it. We just they just need hit to be it. educated. Hit yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Had it or hit it. Personal space invaders. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hit it only because when they get that close, there's some enthusiasm that they don't know how to contain. And I, I don't want to ever squash that. You're God, such a good God person. damn it, Neil. All right. I'm going to keep trying. No, right. No, am I right? <laughs> Someone who gets real close to you and starts talking, they're enthusiastic about something. I know. Something. Oh, no, You're and so it makes me sweet. crazy and I want to push him. <laughs> <laughs> You're a much bigger person with a much bigger brain, but we're going to try to peg you down here. Okay. Okay. Had, go on. Had it or hit it, spam calls. Oh. Uh, do you don't have an in-between thing there? No. <laughs> Because I ask myself. No, it's a black and white thing. I know this is very unscientific. If I ask myself. Say it. Say it, If now. If that were my job, I'd be very sad that you'd be angry with me just performing my job. True. It, it's, it's true. It's, it's not. Is it their fault that that's the only job they can have? I knew people who in big call rooms that were doing just that. And yeah. they're just trying to pay their rent. Yeah. So I can't. What if I it's a robot? Had it was someone just trying to, 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 to pay their rent. And that's okay. what they are. Here's, if you want to get it back at them, you answer the call and you keep them on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a recipe last night and let me tell you how that turned out. And, and then you use up their time, they'll hang up on you because not, if they know they're not getting money. Okay. How about this variation of a spam call? Go. Your cell phone rings, and it is a robocall for a politician that is a pro-Second Amendment, Trump, MAGA-style politician, but it's a robot. Had it or hit it? Uh, If you can't get enough staff to call me with a human being, I don't think you deserve anybody's vote. It wouldn't (laughs) matter what a political party it represented. So, so had it. Yay! <laughs> Mr. Chill. I've is, had it with robocalls. Mr. Yes. Chill is. I've also around. had it with with your call is very important to us. Please stand by. Right. It can't be that important to you if a recording tells me my call is important to you. Agree. So don't stop. You know, let's let's get real here. There's our guy right there. We knew we could pull it out of you. Okay. <laughs> had it or hit it memes. You don't know invented the term meme? No. It was Richard Dawkins. Really? Richard Dawkins. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. It was like it's a gene that gets passed from one generation to the next, but it's it's a it's a memory gene. So it's so it's so compelling that it gets I I'd say hit it. I have nothing Same. against meme. I like yeah. memes too. Okay, the last one. Had it or hit it, Donald Trump. Yeah, I've after September after um January sixth, I had it with Donald Trump. Agree. He says, Let's, we're going to march on the Capitol and I'll be there with you. You know, before then, he, he was just a politician that many people liked, that most people didn't like. But OK, this is what we're in a democracy. You vote for people. But if you start planning, resu- you know, uh, insurrections of the seat of our government, 
Uh, no, there, there's no room for that. Agreed. Agreed. We've yeah. had it with so, you. So I've had it. <laughs> had it. Neil, I want to yeah. tell you, I read your book, To Infinity and Beyond. Great title, of course. And you do a great job. There are a lot of things I had never even heard of or well, thought of. Well, that's the of. whole point. We're, we're, we're handpicking things. It's a, our ascent from Earth's surface to the edge of the universe, but with our bodies, with our machines, with our space probes, and with our mind. And it's that journey where at any given moment, there's a point that feels like it's infinity away. Right. But then you, then clever people and new inventions and new materials enable it. And now you have new understandings of infinity. So it's a, it's, it's not a literal truth, but it's an emotional truth about uh, exploration and discovery. Well, you do a great job of like, I don't want to say dumbing it down, but edu being, speaking it in a plain enough language that I get it. That's the DNA of my po my podcast, Star Talk. It's the three strands of DNA: uh, science, pop culture, and com and humor. Humor and the pop culture part of that are all the movies that the Hollywood movies that touch the science that we talk about in that book. And you know, I'm going to talk about the movie. Did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? Right. Could they be better? So you know, I'd be all up in the movie when <laughs> you go through there. I'm glad yeah. you brought up movies because I read somewhere that you watch Titanic and the scene where Rose is floating in the ocean, you noticed that the stars were not aligned properly and it bugged yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it was just, it was And a, it, it bothered you. It was it, I'll, I'll tell you why it bothered me. Uh, okay, if you want to piss on the sky, fine. But don't piss on the sky and praise your own production for how accurate it is. <laughs> if you were around back when that movie was first advertised uh he went to in a submersible with robert ballard down to the titanic and they took video and we have the wall sconces the china patterns the state rooms were exquisitely and meticulously recreated so that the titanic is re is there in all of its splendor and now you have a sky that's wrong <laughs> latitude that it was a the moonless night it was a cloudless night we know the day the date the time there's only one sky Rose should have been looking at with her dead, <laughs> frozen boyfriend off the edge of the plane. And it was the wrong sky. <laughs> Don't you think he should have tried a second time to float on that? Yes. So, I he so. gave up too quickly. Yeah. Oh, oh. So anyhow, it's not only the wrong sky. The left half was a mirror reflection of the right half. So it was not only a wrong sky. It was a lazy sky. And so, yeah, I just had no patience for that. <laughs> I understand I, I, that you fixed that shit. The, well, yeah, was... I, so I wrote letters and with my finest of letterhead, <laughs> and I finally, I finally caught up with him. Finally caught up with James Cameron, and I said, "Mr. Cameron, why didn't you, you know?" And then he said, "Oh, well, that was done in post production, and I didn't see it." I wanted him to grovel at my feet, <laughs> yeah, but he didn't. Okay, yeah, that was not. He was not up to that, and I, I so I was still. That was an answer, but I wasn't satisfied with that answer. Then, just make, long story short. Uh, I, I'm here at the Hayden Planetarium of the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Big space here. So one of the big magazines that might have been uh, Wired was giving him an award. And they were going to have a celebration here in this facility as a, like a third party rental of the space. As a courtesy, they called me up and said, do you want to come to this award ceremony for James Cameron? And I said, is he going to be there? <laughs> so I said, bet, I'm in. So... Afterwards, we go out to dinner. There's like eight of us, and the wine is pouring. And I said, "Jim, how come you? How, why did you? How?" And he said, "Last I checked, worldwide, Titanic has has earned a billion dollars. <laughs> Imagine how much more it would have made had I gotten the sky correct." <laughs> okay, I'm done here. I'm done. I, I got. No, I got nothing. I'm done. Wait, wait. But wait. A few weeks later, I get a phone call. This is Dr. Tyson. I said, yes, who is this? I forgot his name. Uh, Joe Smith. Uh, Joe. Uh, James Cameron is producing a centennial re-release in IMAX of this film. He's recutting some of the visuals of the scene, and he tells me you have a sky he can use. I said, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and so I created the sky looking up to the side, gave it to him, and that made it into the centennial release. The, and, and this was just between me and him, but the press got a hold of this. And 
And it was it made headlines when that movie came out. But that was not my intent to call him out publicly that way. But right. I will say, if you're going to defend something, defending the sky is a pretty noble thing to defend. It Thank is you. noble. I really you, noble. you get me. Thank I, you. I appreciate that. I appreciate. Somebody appreciates me. I do. <laughs> I really think that because we defend a lot of really crazy, petty things here, Neil. And so that is just hashtag goals for us here at right. Had It Absolutely. to defend something as noble as the sky. Absolutely. The night sky. And you can have an app that would show you what that sky was. By then, there were apps available, but you could not double check what his China patterns look like and the state rooms look like. <laughs> so here's something he's saying is true that you can't verify. And something that he's also saying is true that you can verify and it's false. So. <laughs> I think you had kind of had it with the fake sky. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just Neil, saying. I know you're going to blow back. I know there's going to be a lot of... I've had it with the fake sky. Okay. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? I was a nice person. You, you are a nice person. Yourself. I know. We don't want to corrupt you too much. We don't want to corrupt keep, you too much. Keep being, keep being chill. Keep okay. doing all the cool shit you do. Keep fighting okay. the good fight. I hear you standing up for marginalized communities everywhere and yep. a voice like yours for LGBTQIA plus. Oh, that's in, in there too. Yeah, yeah like that's the whole thing. Thank you. In states like this, it means so much to have right. people like you of your stature speak out. And it means so much to two middle-aged ladies of average intelligence <laughs> to have such a big shot on our such podcast. Such a big shot. I just watched John Stephen Colbert last week and I was like, oh my gosh, he's going to be on our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm going wherever, wherever I'm needed. <laughs> but Neil, I do I'm think Batman. I'm going to make, I'm, going a, I'm making an argument. I'm going to make an argument that you kind of needed us today just to tap into just a tinge Talk of pettiness ego. Cause you just can't, you cannot can't, be as big brained as you are. And I can't leave it cooped up inside. That's right. Here, this though. is therapy for you. Neil, therapy. thank you so much. Thanks, Neil. You okay. were fantastic. Loved. Uh, by the way, I occasionally give public talks in Oklahoma City. Please. I, I, and you weren't there? Where were I was there last year? I was there. Oklahoma City. I didn't know. Where I will be you? at the next well, one. I will be at the next one, front row. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll find my schedule. Wait, you I'll sign you my know. book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank Bye. you, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Bye. Bye. Well, aren't we hot shit? We are hot shit. Did you kind of get a little crotch sweat going when he was asking us, like, what's the planet for Sunday? And we were like, sun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Merc? Mark? Ma. And I was like, we're the dumbest people on the planet. I was like breaking out my full I'm crotch I'm so glad sweat. I got the 1969 moon landing. I had no fucking clue. Yeah. I, I nailed that. You did. You but carried I was, We missed. We got a demerit when it was the... Moon for Monday. Yeah, we just we failed. were both like, uh, <laughs> oh shit! I, I was like full crotch sweating. Kylie, 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 you have to help. Kylie, us. so what do you think? You think uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is a total underachiever? <laughs> Absolutely, compared to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do think, and he won't admit it. He's kind of like a petty king. That being that wound up about the sky. He had had it. it. He had had, had it, it with, with that. The sky. And he like hunted it down. And he, I think we showed him a glimpse of the beauty of that pettiness. is owning your pettiness. He has such a big brain. He can't just outwardly say that. But we did corner him a couple of times. Yeah. And I'm so glad that that's going to be out in the World Wide Web. We will submit to our permanent record that Neil deGrasse Tyson is chill. It's chill. Absolutely. However... We have some conflicting evidence on our podcast where he has had it with that might be things. A personal belief versus. I know we learned a lot. I'm gonna have to watch this episode like, like five, five or six times, times to get to... it. <laughs> How great is he? How many smart people like that, like that smart, are that funny and engaging? Like, I think I the thing know. that's so great about him, there's a lot of astrophysicists. There's right. a lot of people that are that smart. Is he such a great communicator? Absolutely. And so sometimes I think, you know, you think of a scientist maybe being an introvert, maybe a lot of them are, but he's so extroverted, so gregarious, such a great communicator. Right. And as you said, he has a great way of dumbing things down so that people understand it. And I think it's very important for people to embrace science. I do too. And I think it's important that we understand that all of what's happened in the last hundred years in our world because of modern science is really significant. And, you know, in order to 
try to circumvent climate change and things, we have to understand science. Absolutely. And Neil deGrasse Tyson is now our personal astrophysicist. He's everyone's personal astrophysicist. He is. He's everybody's. But we're on first name basis with him. We are. He was on our podcast. He was on our podcast. Because we're hot shit. And we're Pumps hot did shit. did a great clap. And I did a great clap. So we knew it was going to be a great show. What about how smug you were after that clap? I was. But I was not as smug when I couldn't get Monday. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now, not near a smug. Okay, listener, here's the deal. You got to do a bunch of stuff. Five stars. You can leave a shitty comment. Shittier the better. Five yeah, stars. But we want the five. <laughs> All right. We want 10,000 of these things. We want you to join us on Patreon, our documentary club. We want you to come see us on the Hot Shit Tour, and that link is in the bio and pumps. You just need to tell them what else. We will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both.